deal with people who've been brainwashed into believing that we are the enemy. And Scientology is fundamentally um, silly, in my view, and, the, and although it has a ton of money, it doesn't have many adherents. However, I think it's important to study it and to understand it, because if we can work out how to unbrainwash members of the Church of Scientology, we might be able to work out how to unbrainwash people who are adherents of Islamic State or who believe that North Korea is the one, and people like the North Korean military believe that North Korea is wonderful. How do we unlock that brainwashing mm -hmm. is important. And, and, and that's why psychologically it's interesting. Now, the guy who's done a, a ton of thinking about this is a wonderful American military psychiatrist originally called Professor Robert Lifton, who wrote the first book about brainwashing um, using that term, thought reform of brainwashing. And he'd been the military psychiatrist called in to treat American GIs who'd been brainwashed by the Chinese communists, the Maoists, in, um, at the end of the um, Korean Civil War. So these guys, uh, American GIs who'd been caught and been brainwashed, and his job was to try and treat them and reverse that. And he came away and um, wrote this book called uh, Thought Reform of Brainwashing, which is fascinating. Then Richard Condon, I think, read that book and then wrote The Manchurian Candidate, which is uh, was uh, a great and successful novel about a brainwashed candidate for presidency. And then um, that obviously was turned in the film of Frank Sinatra, then it lay, um, lay low for a bit, and then the Israelis re reversioned that story for somebody who'd been kidnapped and brainwashed by Hezbollah, turning into an Israeli um, um, politician, and an Israeli soldier had been brainwashed, and then Homeland came along and pinched that story from the Israeli um, drama and reversioned it again, all of which tells you that there are no new plots in Hollywood, but also <laughs> that, that, that this, this is a, a big thing. Uh, and um, I, I, so that Scientology isn't just a wacky, vicious money thing, it also might help you unlock stuff. One of the things that Lifton uh, talks about, and I believe this passionately, is that, is that the authoritarian mind or the totalitarian mind abhors humour. It has no tolerance for mockery or a sense of humour. And therefore, you've got to like and admire and support tolerance and mockery in our leaders and in our own in our own doings right uh, right whatever and, and 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 part of the reason i think as i said that mike rinder left the scientology gang and joined the slightly rubbish bbc panorama gang was because we had more fun and my colleagues could could mock me and nothing would happen and i laughed along too right and that, that is a a, a a central thing Anyway, so Mike, um, in, um, having broken from Scientology, organized a kind of event in Florida, um, in the Gulf Coast, uh, where you could hit a golf uh, up the road from um, um, Scientology. Um, what's it called? St. Petersburg, round Clear, there. Clearwater, yeah. Yeah. Um, up the road from there in, an, in a hotel. And there was about 100 ex-members of the Church of Scientology. This is very early on. And uh, me and my uh, then missus were split up, but we we're still great friends. But we were invited out, and it was the most they paid for us to go there. And it felt like being inside Galaxy Quest. <laughs> that there were the fans who were ex members of the Church of Scientology. And the thing is, I mean, I didn't do this, but had I charged $5 for the, to do the show, you were not there, I would have cleaned up. 
because everybody wanted a video of me or a picture of me going, you were not there. And they kind of treated me like a god. And I had to say, listen, I'm not, you've, you've, you've left the god, you know, the crazy god. And by the way, I was brought up a Catholic. I get religious belief. I understand it. I'm still a bit of a Catholic myself, not very much, but a bit. So I don't want to knock other people's religious belief. I don't think Scientology is a religion. I think it's a money-making device. A like Ponzi scheme. It, it's a Ponzi scheme, or it's like the Mafia, or the Coca-Cola Corporation, or, or all three. Um, but it's not a, a, a it's not a religion in my book. Never mind. But there was something slightly cultish about me being the uh, about me being Scientology's devil. Uh, but Mike invited me to his wedding, um, and and I and I and that really is for Mike this um, heavy duty Scientologist as he was, and he was still for a time he believed in the works of Hubbard, but didn't like the church the thing and 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 i think now he's out out but for a time anyway well in the middle of all of this there am i at his bloody wedding and it was wonderful and good bonkers tell a quick story when i was in trouble real psychological trouble psychiatric trouble with the tommy robertson attacks and not being allowed to defend myself by the bbc eventually i had to go sick and i saw a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist said, before we start, Mr. Sweeney, I really enjoyed your film about Scientology. Then the BBC hired a second psychiatrist, a professor of psychiatry, who was going to check my psychiatrist, who said that I've been put under impossible work stress and therefore they couldn't sack me in the way they were trying to sack me. And um, my, uh, the professor of psychiatry said, Mr. Sweeney, before we start, I just want to say I really liked your film about Scientology. What do you want me to write? <laughs> so, That's amazing. Um, it's true. Um, the um, it's true. I said the high pitched voice. I don't know why. Uh, I'm I'm somebody who kind of lies all the time. Apart from when I go high pitch, it's true. Uh, but but um, no, that's uh, none of those things are true. Actually, some anyway. Never mind. Um, getting back to the main event.